have you noticed that recently again maybe i'm the only person that notices kind of things because i pay attention or you know i'm paying attention sorry um not that no one else is paying attention but have you noticed that nina kravitz Amelia Lenz and Charlotte the Wit have been literally everywhere, right? We went from going from a period in time where there was a real conversation with some female DJs where they're like, "Look, come on, guys, give us a chance. We don't want equal. What it, what's the thing called? We don't want um out, a quality of outcome. We want a quality of opportunity, right? Yeah, there's enough good DJs, female DJs out there to fill, fill a lineup of a festival that we know for sure. If you've been to a festival too, you know that you know as attendees girls probably make up 40 percent if not more of attendees that attend these festivals right it's not just dudes out there there's a lot of dudes but there are a lot of girls going to these festivals and you have to look at the we are festival debacle to see that that's true right but there's reputation wasn't you know an act and then i think reputation wasn't even to do with women it was just to do with like them only most bo- festival bookers not really challenge themselves and only booking the people that they know are going to be 30 ticket sellers so it's not even a girl thing. It's even guys are complaining. Hey man, what the fuck? You're not picking me. I'm I'm a sick in my area. I'm doing good things. I'm a local hero. Wasn't it that thing with Red Bull where they were, where they were going and playing a certain type of genre? I don't know. They're celebrating a certain Brazilian genre of music, and they just book people from Europe. They didn't even book anyone local, right? There's that kind of stuff, right? There's loads loads of really stupid things that they could easily win in and just kind of you know stop complaints. Or even if it's just even if it doesn't come from a real place, just a kind of an exercise in kind of understanding where you're putting the festival right and who's attending it so anyway in the last few years it's gone the complete opposite way now it feels as if like most festivals are just trying their hardest to push female uh, djs who some of them are great some of them aren't so great and it kind of feels a bit imbalanced right but at least something's happening in that regard but also there was an idea i thought or not idea but this is i thought the other day i was like thinking it's weird that you know you're seeing the same kind of art it's the same it's been they're mirroring what's happening with the men of DJ really you're seeing the same kind of group of five to ten women constantly being promoted Amelia Lenz Charlotte DeWitt uh, Black Madonna Peggy Goo um, uh, Dr. Rubenstein uh, Lella Wilkins um, who's the other one uh, Nastia the other one is well. there's, there's three others I forgot anyway but there's a, a group of ten women who always been pushed in front and again it's the same as the men like right? it's the same kind of group of people and if you really and if you thought to yourself why is it why am I always seeing these um say people being promoted everywhere this kind of report says right it says here festivals this is kind of a, one of the pages on the report female techno DJs dominated festival circuit in 2018 Nina Kravitz plays two times as many as her lead uh, as the leading band right as yeah she yeah is it Nina Kravitz has played the most sets. So it's basically a list of saying here, there's a number of festivals played in 2018, top performing DJs. Number one, Nina Kravitz, 35 festivals. Number two, Amelia Lenz, played 27 festivals. Number three, Armin Van Buren, 26. Number four, Charlotte DeWitt, 24. And number five, Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, 22. So if you thought it was it's like you, only you that thought that, that was a notice in this, you're not. It's the reports are there to be said. Now again, not sure how I feel about this, but I think in general, representation is good in general going forward. I think it will kind of need to peter out. I think the goal some festivals have of being a 50-50 parity lineup by 2022, I don't think, again, you don't need to be 50-50. It just needs to be representative, representative right? That's the main thing because I think there's guys out there who are undercover and haven't able, have never played a festival when they're 10 years deep in the game. And they're probably looking at people like Peggy Goo and Charlotte the Way and thinking, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm 12 years in the game and I've never played a festival. And these girls are playing just because they're girls. You know what I mean? For the most part, right? That's part of the reason why. And again, I get it. I understand. But, you know, let's, let's, um, let's make it fair all around. But again, 35 festivals in a year, man. That's a lot of work, man. Well done to Nina. Nina Kravitz played 35 different festivals in 2018, according to the Fest Ticket. This made her the top performing DJ and meant she played nearly twice as many festivals as the top performing band, The Killers. Whoa. Amelia Lenz ranked second. The Killers, if you know anything about indie like festivals, they were everywhere last year. Shout out also made the top five and number four with 24 festivals played. Um, online fan base is this number one good one right Amelia, Le- um, Nina Amelia and Charlotte the Wit have grown their Instagram and YouTube fan base faster than, 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 than anyone for the top five DJs increasing followers vis the last quarter year right um, so this is on across Instagram YouTube and Spotify Nina Kravitz has gone up 35% on Instagram Amelia Lenz 63% Charlotte the Wit 79 so it's literally and she was unknown before that that's amazing uh, Vibrate shows that over the past year these three te- female techno DJs have uh, average grown their YouTube Spotify and fan base faster than anyone else Charlotte the Wit has achieved the highest growth of all time yeah of course because she was literally 
you know, unless you were a fan of her productions or you were on the underground or on the techno subreddit, you wouldn't have probably heard of Charlotte the Whip being spoken about at all. And suddenly she just burst through the scene. Her Instagram and YouTube growth was higher than anyone. Blum Martin Deans, um, Marshmallow, Amelia Lenz, now adding twice as many social media fans as a year ago. Um, which is fine, which is great. I'm happy for her. I think obviously there's a privilege in that regard in the female DJ sense. If you're a girl, there's a privilege in terms of you get just you know. You're going to get propped up a little bit more, um, which is fine because representation, I think if you're a girl and you're hot and you're attractive, you're also going to get propped up. And you know, you do, like, again, it's like the Peggy you thing. If you're attractive and you can also DJ and you can make music, like, you know, you've you've kind of, you've killed all three uh, targets, right? You've smashed it. You've kind of got all three things in the, in the boat, which obviously is a part of the reason why people are successful, right? It's not only because of your talent. It's partly because of who you know. It's partly because of your connections. It's partly because of your peer group, your productions, your placement, some luck, where you go and party, you know, your local crew, what do you look like? Have you got a distinctive look, a distinctive style? It all adds to the your law, I'd imagine so, right? Now adding twice as many social media fans as a year ago, daily growth quadrupled after Time Walk 25 Festival. I'm sure she did really well there. Same I think the same happened with um uh Jada G, right? I think she mentioned I think even Peggy Gu mentioned, right? Um, her appearance at um Deck Mantle really kind of burst her through to the kind of commercial or overground um techno scene or electronic music scene in general and just in general um some good stats here about tv advertising some of these girls are fucking smashing it there too the leading global brands are signing up female electronic artists to lead their tv campaigns peggy goo is doing porsche ellie and fur are doing kayak and alice in wonderland is doing fair awesome peggy goo doing porsche is massive man she's got so many fucking brand sponsors in it it's insane <sighs> keep it up girl festival gender diversity pitchfork analysis showed only 90 percent of festival artists were female in 2018 and 150 festivals aiming for 50 percent 20 by 2020 this is a bit of a this is the one where i kind of get a bit mm, i'm not too sure about you don't just need to have 50 50 women and men it should just be you know because again you can't we don't know how many women djs female djs are out there compared to male djs right so if there's not as many, then obviously the talent pool won't be that much to pick from, right? There won't be a big pool of talent to pick from. That's just like a common, that's just a, a standard statistical observation. So what you should be doing is trying to book more female artists, right? It's trying to have a stage that's not, and again, I don't want it to just be female only. I think that's corny and cheesy, but I just think there is something beautiful about having a woman playing in an electronic music festival. It's something, I don't know. It's, it's, like, it's like when you hear a DJ playing at a festival, guy or girl who isn't from Europe. They have a different sort of tone, a different sort of texture with the stuff they, they play. It's just different, yeah? Right? The influence. Like, you even look at the Martinez brothers, right? And the good example, they're kind of, again, they're commercial, don't get me wrong, but their background is from hip hop, right? Scratching, be, um, you know, yeah, scratching and that kind of scene hip hop. And you can feel it in the stuff they play. You can feel the selections in where they play, music wise, right? They're in Miami, they're in Ibiza, LA. In all these glitzy places, you can get the glitz listening to their sets, right? The kind of stuff that would work well in those kind of arenas. Um, same with someone like a Luciano, right? You could get his reference point, Ricardo Villalobos, that his experience kind of bleeds through his DJ sets. So women of women or male, they are, you know, you just need to make it diverse and give it a bit of flavor. So I want to hear a girl from Brooklyn, all right? A Puerto Rican girl from Brooklyn play on the stage festival back to back with Ricardo Villalobos. I don't want her to play just along Charlotte side, Charlotte DeWitt, because they're two girls. I want it to feel different, right? I think the set I saw the other day um, where Peggy Goo and Nina Kravitz and back to back, that was awesome, right? Because they they both got a lot of acid acid house influences. They kind of, you know, again, maybe the same sort of musical taste in that regard. They complement each other really well. They both represent kind of different people at different stages of their career. Nina Kravitz is a bit, wait, is a bit forward, evolving into maybe a solo artist. Um, Peggy Goo has just kind of got her start. That made sense, but I just don't want it to just be like a... It's, it, for me, it's paramount to having all women's running gear be pink, right? That No, just make stuff for women that they can run in. That doesn't need to general, be a gender-specific uh, color wise but also line up right just make it feel nicer because sometimes you go to these festivals the same dudes playing all the time it's like the fabric 20th anniversary when that first lineup came it's like oh come on man like come on let's spice it up let's bring in some fresh blood let's i don't know let's discover people let's let's put in a new kid playing just after richie horton and then see how that kind of functions or you know you just let's just make it a bit more interesting so i think that's where it'll work i think for me i just i just don't not too sure about the whole 50 50 thing whether or not that is the right thing to go about again again what do i know maybe i'm not speaking from the truth in that regard um 
73% of independent musicians have experienced negative emotions. That's standard as par of course in it. You do something on your own, in isolation, away from friends that requires somebody else to... Again, it's a weird profession, right? Music. Because you're doing it in isolation on your own, right? Honing your craft, but then you have to put it out there and hope people like it. So you have to get approved for people. Like, it's a really strange transaction. They have to like the thing that you have. They don't need it. It's like a, when you make a product or service, you're going to fulfill a need, right? Uber fulfills a need. It's, it's a taxi rank, it's a mini cab, whatever, cool, it's Addison Lee, but it's a fulfilling a, a need. Music doesn't fulfill a need, right? Who else needs another a drum, you know, another tech house beat, another new disco song? We don't need none of that stuff, right? We don't need another edit, right? But you you do it in the hope that you can kind of add to the conversation, right? You can kind of provide a, a soundtrack to somebody's afternoon, evening, or weekend. And then they have to choose you. It's a really, it's, it must be a real, real mindfuck for people that make music. I don't make music, but in Monty, it must be really, really strange. And again, there's no way of understanding if it's good or not until you put it out. You might think it's good, but again, you might think everything you do is good. It's a very, very strange thing. Um, business report. More people have ever attended live music, which is awesome. Which you're seeing that also obviously reflected in, in some of the things that they're talking about in terms of clubs closing. But I, just, I still think there needs to be some parity there. It doesn't always need to just be all festivals. I think, Again, what we're seeing is that some of the same charlatans that operate in the nightclub scene also have migrated over to the festival scene, right? The same dudes who are now booking the same old hags for festivals, the same fucking bookings, like, you know, I don't know, Field Day. Has Field Day lineup ever changed in the time that we've been around? Probably not. Um, the same old people. It's where your festival looks like a bit of a cash grab in that regard. You know, big investors trying, just trying to, uh, you know, expand their portfolio. So I'm a little bit dubious in that one too. Um, clubs, however, decline, of course. Las Vegas after a peak. Yeah, so really, really good report. I recommend you check it out if you're interested in nightlife culture like I am. I recommend you check it out. IMS report. Again, I'll, I'll put it in show notes for you guys that care. Um, it's a very, very good report. 